Um, how's life treating you at the moment? Uh, it's good. It's it's surreal. Uh, I've just I'm in LA now where I live, but I was home in Melbourne um, um, until Friday. So I'm okay. here for. Uh, but no, I feel I feel good. Like I was in Melbourne for when the song came out, um, and then came back here to kind of get into things yeah. uh, from here. But it's it's weird because I've had over the last year, I've, and since I signed with my new record label Atlantic, I've had a few songs out with them, but they were kind of standalones that I just pushed through myself. Whereas yeah. this new song is the first of the big like whatever our now album campaign is, this is our yeah. first like single with the whole machine. Yeah. So it's felt like, you know, it's had this big build up for years of like, just wait till the single's out. And it's funny now being on the other side of that right. kind of wonderful anticlimactic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you put it out yeah. and you're like, fly little bird, fly. And then you, you watch this thing just fly off and you're like, oh, yeah, now what? That turns into something. <laughs> yeah you're not the only one that said that you're not the only band that said oh we've got an album coming out and then we're like what next okay. yeah, yeah you're like oh and now it's out and uh we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah yeah you're not the only one so um yeah so just before we go on to the single and the album yeah. australia to la uh, what what was the journey like uh, what brought you to la america's where all my work is kind of mostly found um advocates i guess like I, my, my biggest audience is still Australia, but my managers, my record label, my, at the time when I first signed publishing and stuff was all over here. Right. So it just got to the point where it was logistically a nightmare. I love Australia. I still yeah, feel yeah, very yeah. Australian. And if I, especially with the pandemic and things like yeah. I, I just went back for Christmas and then ended up staying for seven months. It was right. great. We had no virus. We had no, we didn't have to wear masks, you know, wow. <laughs> like it was just life as normal. Yeah. Um, but I just have to live, I have to live in America because there's just yeah. all the stuff with my music is going on over here. Um, and it, I, I initially tried to go back and forth. I thought that I could get away with that. It just is too hard. And it, you know, when, especially with the songwriting stuff, you know, if you're trying to work with people like Chicks or Kesha or they're always last minute, they're like, can you, can you get in with these guys on Thursday? And you're like, I have a wedding, but sure, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's like, I just had to be here. So it, it sort of was a necessity thing. And weirdly, the pandemic, um, staying, being stuck in my LA house all of last year, all I could do was like walk around my neighborhood. It actually made me fall in love with living in LA, right. which I never, I never would have imagined. Yeah, so most people different. are like, most foreigners are like, oh, you know, LA is fine. I actually was like, I love it here and I have a beautiful neighborhood and I now feels like my home. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, what what's it been like kind of going back and forward to Australia? I mean, do you, do you kind of miss it? Do you have family back out there? All my family are out there. Uh over the years, because I've been coming to LA in trips at least for like 10 years. So yeah. I have a really good community here. So I wouldn't say I I now feel probably even more established here than when I yeah. than I do back there uh yeah i i i like it i like i also it's nice to be to know that i have the option that if things go crazy or if a civil war <laughs> happens here yeah. uh, i can escape back to australia yeah. um musically like for my for my career sometimes it's a bit of a culture shock now because i'm here and i've got all this infrastructure around me and then i go back and i obviously have like an the aussie arm of warner music and stuff yeah. who are helping me but sometimes it's got, it sends me back to that like when I was just running everything myself kind of feeling and just be like, oh, things are really exhausting to, to execute down here. Yeah. Okay. On, on that note then, I mean, you mentioned Atlantic Records. How did they get involved? I mean, was that purely from, from LA, from your life in LA? Through, yeah. Yeah. Actually through War in Your Arms. Um, All right. So okay. when I was signed to my previous record label, which was Secretly Canadian, who I also love, uh, I had... Um, I had this downtime where some stuff, there was a tour that I was on that went, something went wrong and the tour got canceled and it was a bit of a shame. And that my managers were like, well, let's get you back to LA and let's get you kind of demoing some songs. Like let, we looked at publishing and we were like, why don't we try and get a publishing deal and let's put you in a studio with an engineer and any songs that you've written that you don't know what to do with, let's demo them. 
and one of them was War in Your Arms. Okay. And because initially when I wrote that song, I thought that I was writing it for someone else. Right. Okay. Um, no one specifically, I just, I, it wasn't a song that when I wrote it, I was like, this is a song for me. I just yeah. was like, this is a good song. Uh, and it ended up going to a bunch of different people. And one of them was um, Kelly Clarkson's team oh, at Atlantic. Yes. So yeah, it, so I was brought into the Atlantic building being like, we love this song for Kelly, but also who are you? What's going on? Why, you right. know, why are you signed to a, to a cool artsy indie label? You know, you're not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so, but, and then basically through that, then eventually, you know, Craig Kalman, who was running the Kelly project at the time was like, I, not only do I think you should work with us, but I think you should sing this song. All right. Okay. Brilliant. Um, on, on another song, it's a great song. Um, oh, thanks. It, you co-wrote it with somebody though, but it still, yes. it still feels like it comes from a very personal place. I mean, is that, is that the case? It is. It's, it's one of those weird things though, I think that just happens sometimes with art. In the moment as we were writing it, it did not feel personal. Right. Uh, I, I wrote the chorus, Walking Through the City uh, in Melbourne. I, I just specifically remember the moment that this happened. Um, and I remember calling my friend being like, I think I've just written a really cheesy chorus and we should write the song. And she was like, great. And then we got together and finished the song. And I mean, you know, we both, uh, by this point we were both like, we, you know, we knew how to write songs. And so we knew how to get into the kind of emotional core of what the chorus was um, and tell the story truthfully. But it's, I don't think either of us at the time were like, this is really about my, experience that I'm in right now yeah. coincidentally it was I was kind of writing the experience that I was in at the time I, but I just wasn't doing it as intentionally as I had done with other songs and I will say like it wasn't when we were shopping the song around to like Kelly and stuff I was detached from it because I didn't think like wait that's my life story I was just like great that's a great song yeah. until once we got into producing the song um for the album and I was just starting to like get myself into the kind of world of like okay how am I going to perform this it wasn't until then that I was like wow the song like couldn't be more perfect <laughs> for me and yeah. for what you know for the for the story that I'm telling on this album so yeah I, I wish I had a more poetic answer for you it sort of was a weird like I didn't realize it was about me till I realized it was about me <laughs> a great story though I mean you've talked about the story of the album what could you talk us through that story what the album's kind of some of the I, things look I, I think I think I'll, I think I'm going to wait to fully talk about it until kind of the album's coming out, but I'll say that, uh, I'll say that between the first album and now this, I, my life has gone through just a lot of upheaval. Uh, yeah. and the most obvious one has been moving from my home in Melbourne to LA. Um, I mean, I, I, it's it's an annoying, vague answer, but I'll say that just it, on so many levels, there's just been a real upheaval and a lot of chaos. Yeah. Uh, whilst at the same time, never been more career successful. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's sort of, that. it's the, I mean, the collision of those two things is, yeah. is very much a theme of what the album's about. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, the this, this, this story that War in Your Arms really tells is kind of about just confronting relationships where you're like, I love you a lot and this is just hurting me now. So it's time to yeah. kind of walk away from that. Okay. I mean, from, from those experiences, I mean, I, I relocated, but not quite the distance that you did. Mm. Um, what did you, you know, randomly relocated closer to my family, not further away? So. <laughs> It's all a bit strange but um <laughs> just for, what, what's the biggest lesson you've learned and kind of what have you learned about yourself as a person from from doing that great question well the interesting thing about moving so far away is you can kind of you can kind of reinvent yeah. and i guess that's why a lot of people do that kind of move uh you can kind of start from scratch. I mean, it's a little different for me because I, I came here with my music first. So a lot of the relationships I was making were under the, in the context of who I am as an artist, but 
Uh, but even that, like, it's funny, you're separated from the kind of baggage of, of who you were growing up and the expectations people have. And then even just culturally, America's culture is so different to Australia's. I actually would say, uh, if I'm allowed to say this, if it's not conceited, I think I've expanded as an artist and my scope, even my vision for my career has really expanded coming yeah. over here. So yeah, I think, I think that that has been a really interesting uh, result of, of moving here. Um, and then, you know, and then even just personally kind of being like, oh, I get to determine who I am. And, you know, because also I was a bit older when I finally like moved over. So, okay. I mean, one thing you touched on earlier was be, during lockdowns, being able to walk down your, your kind of local area in your community and find it kind of, kind of discovering how beautiful it was. I was yeah. going to ask on, on the kind of flip side of that, how difficult has lockdown been? How, how challenging has it been as, as an artist for you? You know, I got lucky in that. Two things I'd say. One, thanks to my songwriting with other artists, yeah. I just was, I am so lucky that for this moment in my life, uh, I've got the financial stability to not panic. Right. Like a lot of my friends, you know, have gone through hardships in a way that I didn't have to go through the financial hardships. And then the other thing that I got really lucky with is that we finished the album at the end of 2019. Wow. Um, yeah, so we actually, I actually went into 2020 ready to release. Okay, uh, so. And so the challenge for me was really more of a, you know, the, the frustration of like, oh, I've, I've got this work that I'm ready to like let out into the world so I can move on to the next thing. And actually I just have to now wait yeah. for a year. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and complain about that because so many people had a terrible year Absolutely. Um, and you know, I really am thankful that that I I didn't have to struggle financially or you know anything like that. Um, but it's just it was a brutal year, and especially like in Australia, when I think about, and I know that the UK had similar things. Just all the of all the industries that got propped up or supported, the arts was just absolute bottom of the list. It's so depressing and just, you know, and even then just the mental strain on all my artist friends that are like, oh, that's our value. <laughs> that's what we, and even though there's like, they literally was set, like, there was a huge financial value that the arts contributed to the economy, but the government still just didn't. Yeah, I've got anything. Um... I just was talking to somebody earlier about, you know, are you going to be touring and stuff? And I was like, I actually just can't even get my head around what that looks like. I mean, obviously yeah. I hope, and I can't wait, but yeah the road back is going to be a long one i think okay uh, okay so just moving on then I mean, you've talked about this kind of songwriting you do i mean but you also did a cover of peter gabriel's um in your eyes mm. was he a big well i mean why did you choose that song and was it kind of big my interest? favorite song yeah. that's my favorite song ever okay yeah, so, yeah was he the way was he the i don't you? believe i don't believe in like i don't think we should you should ever have like artistic like pinnacle thing works like that but I just, if somebody ever said, like, what's your favorite song? I don't even have to think about it. Like, yeah. it's in your eyes. So, uh, I'm, the same, I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure if there are songs that I love as much as that, uh, they don't come to mind as quickly. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then, yeah, Peter Gabriel's just, uh, he's sort of, I, I sort of feel like he's a bit of a North Star for me at the moment. Okay. Um, yeah, I just love him and his music and his writing and the way his music feels and his live shows. and. Yeah, I was going to ask, going back to kind of like pre you becoming an artist and your kind of childhood and stuff, do you remember the moment you kind of discovered music and you kind of fell in love with it? Was that? Well, I feel like I had, I feel like the, art, the, the coming of age as an artist moment happened quite late because I grew up, my parents were singer-songwriters. Oh, okay. Um, well, they're like folk musicians. My dad's Indonesian. My mum's Australian, but she moved to Indonesia when she was a teenager. And they were in a band together that was quite big in the 70s in Indonesia. So, but, and that was all done by the time I was born in Australia. Um, so like they moved back to Australia and got into, got very involved in like church and, and yeah. you know, music in the context of church, but it wasn't like a career thing. So by that point, when me and my four siblings were born, I just grew up in a super musical family 
but it was always like spiritual music related to spirituality and related yeah. to kind of religion and faith um so it was never thought of as like a career so my the way that i played music was always about like doing it with my family or doing it in the community of church yeah um so there was no there's no moment i didn't i wasn't the kid really that like listened a lot to the radio i mean even though we did but my first relationship with music was not as a fan but as a participant if that makes sense yeah. and then it wasn't until and so because it was just a fact of my life all my siblings sing all of us play things my parents you know they don't sing anymore but like when we were growing up they still did a bit of that it really wasn't until my like 20s that I that I actually was like oh I actually like love this I actually this is a real language that I speak um and I actually feel like I can control the language you know if i work on it and stuff okay i mean one, one thing you mentioned earlier i mean you kind of you got the album ready and you were kind of then obviously last year happened <laughs> yeah. um what, what you mentioned the, the the next part of the story i mean what where do you see that going or what is the next part of the story uh oh that's an interesting question i mean yeah i already yeah i i think in terms of i think in terms of albums yeah. And each album to me has, I think the the first album I worked on um, was kind of a, a coming of age as an artist. Um, I think that from the beginning of the album to the end of the album, I think I arrived as a songwriter and kind of came into my artistic self. Yeah. This new one is tells, you know, its own story of rebirth and that will, you know, when the album comes out, I can't wait to talk about. The next one, I think actually, I think it's going to be all about my family. I okay. think I want to, I think I want to, I right, I guess I shouldn't give away too much, but I, I think the next one's about my family and there's a, there's a specific plan I sort of have for how I want to do that. It's, okay. it's you know, if, if this, this one's a success and I get to make another one. <laughs> Watch this space. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've talked about your co-writer as well and your work as a songwriter. And we've talked about Peter Gabriel. I mean, who would your ultimate collaboration be with? You know, that's a weird, the, my answer, that's probably weird given like my inspiration of people like Peter Gabriel. But I was thinking about this. I would love to write with Lady Gaga. I think she's the, I think she is, the reason I pick her, I mean, I, the two would probably be, also because I just think that they're a bit untouchable and I probably would never work with them. I'd love to work with like Chris Martin. Yeah. I just think he's such a gifted melody and he's just an incredible writer but gaga specifically because she's so nuts with her instincts as a pop songwriter the choices she makes are so bold and singular and i just would love to be around that in a room like when i think about the chorus to um edge of glory there's yeah. no other artist no songwriter that I, you you would never find a songwriter in la that would have the guts to go what if the chorus went I'm on the edge, the edge, the edge, the edge, the edge, the edge, the edge. It's just, it's a really idiosyncratic, you need to have a certain type of brain that's like, trust me, I can show up to the party wearing a dress and meat and everyone's going to fucking love it. Yep. To have the kind of balls to do kind of musical moves like that, I think is really interesting. Yeah. So I, I would love to write with, uh, with her. Okay. Are there yeah, any... Totally. Are there any? You, I've got you thinking now, haven't I? You can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, are there any? Are there any collaborations coming up that you're working on that you can tell us about? Uh, <laughs> I wish I could say there are. There aren't. Yeah. I think because I think because the because we finished the album end of 2019, and then I just was forced to hit pause. Yeah. Um, I've sort of my desire to kind of create has probably hit a bit of a wall. Right which did happen with the first album as well. Once I'm in the headspace of wanting to like release, I find it hard to think about kind of making things, even though I kind of know already like the world of what I want to do next. Yeah. Um, but yeah, getting into this sort of details. So yeah, no, nothing, nothing that I can, nothing that comes to mind. Okay, right. Then just, just to finish off then, we do a kind of less serious kind of question. Um, yeah. you, got, you got kind of quite lucky on this one. Um, because some of them are being quite ridiculous. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, you, I mean, yours was basically, if you had to spend a year without access, without either access to the internet or access to your mobile phone, 
which would you give up and how would you compensate for it? Oh, I'd give up my mobile phone. Yeah. Yeah. I think I could live without my mobile phone. I don't think I could live without the internet. How would I compensate? Uh, I just would cut off interaction with every other human being, which I do. <laughs> Sounds like a great plan. I think I'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't need to, you don't need to lose your mobile phone to do that. It's, it's always a plan. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Just to finish off then, I mean, good, obviously good luck with the album and thanks for your time. Um, right. Firstly, when are we going to catch up in the UK so we can carry on? I, I don't know. I, I hope soon. I know that they're, they're talking about somewhere in the back half of this year. Right. I mean, again, I, is touring ever going to happen again? <laughs> no, I hope no. so. I can't wait. I love, I have loved playing. I've had some really great, experiences playing live in, in the UK and I can't wait to get back. I love yeah. it there. I wish I hope I get to like spend some more serious time there at some point. Definitely. First of all, you've got to at least do a gig first before we start talking. Yeah, that's right. That's before, right. Before we talk about moving there. True. Play play live anywhere. Um yeah. but yeah, like I said, I mean I really appreciate your time, even though you jet lagged. It's been it's been great catching up. Exactly. Good luck for the rest of the year. Yeah, sweet. No worries to take care. Awesome. Have a good day. Thanks, Graham.